Welcome to the Close the Chapter podcast. I am Kristen Boyce, a licensed marriage and family therapist with a private practice, Pathways to Healing Counseling. Through conversations, education, strategies, and shared stories, we will be closing the chapter on all the thoughts, feelings, people, and circumstances that don't serve you anymore and open the door to possibilities and the real you. You won't want to miss an episode, so be sure to subscribe. Welcome to this week's Close the Chapter podcast. First, I wanted to start off with a thank you for being here with me and for tuning in to this episode on displacement and the importance of talking about this topic. It impacts every single person I've worked with, including myself in my own life. And we're not really sharing much about what is displacement, why is it important, and how does it work exactly. So we're going to dive into that today. And before we get into that, I want to check in. How is the start to your new year? How are you feeling? Did you pick a word? I'm curious. I'd love to know your words. A few of you have DM me and shared your words. I did an episode two episodes ago on choosing a word for the new year, why it's important. What is that all about? My word is expansion of self, mind, body, spirit, beliefs. I'm really working on opening up even more uh, continuously on a growth journey. And I want to be able to love even bigger. And in order to do that, I have to continue to expand and open myself. Now, that may scare some of you. And I'm at a place now where I want to really attune to what is going on right here, right now, in this very moment. So as part of this journey of expansion, noticing any kind of displacement of how I'm feeling or what I perceive is really targeted for myself, and I'm putting it onto somebody else, I want to be aware of that. So I want to hit a pause button before we dive even deeper into this topic to jump on the mailing list at Kristen, K-R-I-S-T-E-N-D, Boyce, B-O-I-C-E dot com forward slash free resources. You will get a healing guide, a journal of sorts to help you begin or maybe you're in the middle of your healing journey, I will always be on a healing journey. So I just wanted to create something that was useful, helpful, practical, that you can implement in your life right now. So it'll be emailed to you. Also on social media, I try to post as much helpful information as I can. And it's on Instagram and Facebook, at Kristen D. Boyce, TikTok, which I'm just learning how to do, at Kristen Boyce and Pinterest, at Kristen Boyce. So follow along also on Twitter, Kristen Boyce all the platforms. I just want to be helpful and support you as you're expanding yourself. Because when you expand, the healing begins. When we're contracted, that's a moment of pause to see, am I shut down? What am I feeling? What am I afraid of? Because the healing is stuck at times when we're contracted because we're trying to protect ourselves. And so just kind of exploring How can you open yourself up to possibilities, to hope, to different ways of seeing something or diving deeper into deconstructing ideas? There's so many ways to expand. So just curious about your word for 2023. You can go back and listen to that two episodes ago. Love to know your word because I'm so interested in that because it shows really what do you want more of in your life? What do you want to draw in? What are you trying to release? And don't get hung up on the word. Just see what comes through. And you can listen to that episode. I won't dive deeper into that. But without further ado, let's talk about today's topic of what is displacement exactly? And why is it so important we're talking about it? Well, it's important because displacement is a defense mechanism that involves an individual transferring quote unquote negative feelings or feelings we don't want to have or feel from one person or thing to another. For example, a person who is angry at their boss may take out their anger on their family member by shouting at them. So let me give you a personal example and why I'm bringing this up. Because perhaps you are going through a transition, you're in grief, perhaps you're sad or disgusted or angry about something or someone. 
And instead of processing that through therapy, journaling, or maybe just in the moment it comes up, this is what happened to me. It was Christmas Day and we're opening presents. And I really try to be present and not put expectations on the holidays. So let go of outcomes unattached to responses about gifts and just be in the moment. Well, I was tired, sleep deprived. I'm not going to blame it on that. Let's just call it my inner child got activated and I really got sad. I was sad and then I was a little bit mad and I kind of felt irritated. I was irritated. I was annoyed and I decided to get up and I started to get annoyed at one of my kids. I was like, I'm annoyed. I'm irritated. I don't want to be like this. It's Christmas day, but there was something deep getting rumbled and stirred up. So was getting irritated at her. And that was a displacement of my grief. Even though it looked different, it didn't look like sadness. It looked like frustration, irritation, annoyance. And I knew that something got, it was stirring up in me because I could feel it in my nervous system, my body. So I got up, I went into the closet and I was having a grief burst. When I got quiet, I got centered and curious. What came up for me was grief as I lost my mom in October. And instead of taking it out on my family through irritation, annoyance, shortness, snippiness, however we want to say it, prickliness, I was like, okay, I'm doing that. I need to be aware of that. What is going on? So I just went in the closet. I got on my knees. I literally got on my knees in my closet by myself and just put my hand over my heart center and was like, what am I feeling? And the sadness, just a flood. We call those grief bursts where you are, it's like a wave. I've talked about it so many times on the podcast, but it helps normalize. I had a grief burst. It was a wave of sadness and I just started to sob. I mean, <laughs> you know, that kind of sobbing. And clients call it the ugly cry and I call it the beautiful process. And I know it doesn't feel like that, but you are releasing what needs to come forward and what's getting trapped in your nervous system. It's an expression of what lies within. And now I can break the cycle of not displacing what I'm feeling onto anybody else. So I was just crying and I was sad. And my older daughter comes in and she puts her arm around me and she says, oh, mom, it's okay to cry because I say that all the time. It's okay to let it out. It's okay to cry because the feelings are acceptable in our home. Even if they're intense, now as long as we're not hurting anyone, but they are acceptable. You're allowed to have them. It's encouraged to express them and let them out. Put her arm around me. And the first thing I felt was, oh my gosh, I don't want her to feel like she has to caretake me. I don't want her to feel like the parentified child. All my psychology Sometimes people call it psychobabbles coming through my head because I didn't want it to create how I felt with my mom that I had to caretake her. And I said, Oh, honey, I'm going to be okay. I'm having a grief burst and it's okay to let it out. And I'm, (laughs) and I said, How are you feeling? Because it's important for her to express how she feels as she's seeing me cry. And she said, I feel sad too, mom. I miss her too. And in that moment, there was such a tender exchange and it was pivotal for me because. I was carrying the fear of the pattern that was established generationally between mothers and daughters that the daughter had to kind of caretake the mother. And I didn't want that to be the case for my kids. And it's been something I'm almost gone the other way with. And at that moment, this was important for her to see that it's okay for me to have feelings, which she does often, but not to, I mean, this is a real grief for her deep. There's been several over the course of several months. And she said, I'm so glad you're letting it out, mom. You've always been the, I'm trying to remember exactly what she said, something like the strong one. And I had a moment of shame, like, oh, she sees me as not strong. And then I took a deep breath and I said, yeah, it's okay for all of us to be human. We're not always going to be strong, quote unquote strong. I feel it. And I said, this is kind of what strength looks like. It looks like vulnerability and letting out these feelings. There was no way I could have stuffed it back down. I mean, there's one, I knew better. Two, my body said no. And three, it was coming no matter what. It was a wave. It was coming. And it was such a tender, sweet moment that I would cherish forever. The level of empathy she showed. And I was like, oh, she's embodied empathy because we've allowed empathy in our home. We've allowed emotions in our home. So she knows how to offer it. 
because I want to believe I haven't done this perfectly at all, that we've offered empathy when there has been pain in her life. It was a moment of where I didn't want to displace what was really not, yes, I can be annoyed at my kids and that's okay. But what was really going on was deeper than that. It was a moment of reconciliation between my mom getting us gifts and how she put time into that. And maybe we didn't like the gifts or it was too much gifts. And there was so much to it that I had empathy for my mom going, oh, this is what it feels like if you feel like "Mm, the gifts aren't appreciated. And then I had to unattach from that, but it was begging me to process the sadness that I felt. What if displacement is inviting you into looking at what are you really feeling that you weren't allowed to feel as a child that now you're putting on to your partner? Maybe you're angry at your mother for not hearing you. Maybe there was a lot of control in the family system. Maybe there was detachment and distance and neglect. Maybe it was all about your mom and you didn't get the opportunity to have your own voice and your feelings shared. Maybe you're angry at your father. Maybe there was some addiction, workaholism, absence there, emotional unavailability there that you weren't able to share with your dad. Maybe there was anger issues with dad or mom and just emotional unavailability, and you weren't allowed to be angry at them or really express how you, some deep wounds or fears or sadness around dis, being disconnected from them or them not hearing you, listening to you, acknowledging your feelings instead of making it all about them, or that just wasn't acceptable. And you're really angry and sad and grieving that, but it gets put on and displaced to your children for not listening to you or your partner. And while yes, that's hurtful, it's not our kid's job to offer us what our parents were really meant to offer us, which is empathy, acknowledgement, emotional attunement, connection, safety and security for us to feel our feelings, to express our thoughts, to process real time hurts. Maybe there was a divorce or a death or a separation or a move or a health issue, or any kind of trauma, bullying, we weren't able to talk through that, let the emotions out, share how we were feeling about ourselves, the shame maybe we were carrying, the responsibility for things. And so we displaced that onto somebody else. And this is the other thing I can do. It's like, I want my husband to be present. And yes, that is important in a marriage. And he's very good at that. And he's going to have times where he's not present. This is just how it is. Same with me. I'm going to have times where I'm not present. But what happens is it's a rewounding from my childhood of having non-presence. And my parents did the best they could. I'm not blaming anybody. And they've helped me be who I am. So I wouldn't trade any of it. I really wouldn't because it's such a gift. I've learned my pain point. Well, if you will, my hurt is if I don't feel heard, understood, attuned, like paid attention to, held space for, then I feel unimportant. I feel disconnected. That is really how I felt in childhood. And sometimes I displace that onto my husband. Like, do you care about me? And yes, he does. It's really a displacement of some feelings I felt towards my parents. And that's okay for me to feel that way and recognize, is this really about my husband or is this really about something else? Is this really about my irritation with my daughter? Some of it, it's not an all or nothing. There may be parts of it that really are geared towards that person. And then what percentage isn't geared towards that person? What is displaced? So let's talk about an overview and dive in a little bit deeper into displacement. According to the APA, displacement is the transfer of negative feelings from one person to another. The theory is that a person deals with the tension or anxiety associated with quote unquote negative feelings, such as fear or anger, by releasing them on a non threatening target. For example, if a person expresses or experiences negative emotions due to their boss shouting at them, they may go home, we talked about this, and then get upset with their pet or their kids or their partner. And the person might feel as though they cannot confront their boss for the fear of losing their job. It's not possible. As a result, they may take the anger out on someone who is less threatening or something. And that something may be a family member. As displacement is an unconscious defense mechanism, the person may not realize that they're doing it. And this is my invitation. 
I want to bring what's unconscious to the conscious, meaning I am more self-aware. I'm attuned to my body sensations. I'm exploring what am I feeling? Where do I feel that in my body? I just did this the other week in terms of just real time, like doing this exercise. I was actually yesterday. I was processing some deep inner work and was like, okay, where do I feel that in my body? It was my stomach. And it was like, there's the fear of something bad happening and exploring where are the roots of that. And just being with it, sitting with it, attuning to it, being curious about it, not trying to fix it, make it go away. Just let it be and let me connect to how old I felt because that's a familiar feeling from childhood. Take a deep breath. And then I did some journaling. And this is the invitation so we don't displace feelings on another person, quote unquote, negative emotions. I think all emotions are invitations for our evolution, for our healing, for our growth. So if we look at the history of displacement, Sigmund Freud was an Austrian neurologist who developed psychoanalysis at the start of the 20th century. And according to the APA, psychoanalysis is a set of theories about emotions and behaviors. And it is based on the idea that mental processes are unconscious. The APA says that the term unconscious refers to the process of the mind of which a person isn't aware. Freud discusses different defense mechanisms throughout his work. These unconscious psychological processes serve to protect a person from the unwanted feelings or what feels like unacceptable thoughts. And so here's what basically displacement is a defense mechanism, like I spoke about earlier. And it's not necessarily bad because trauma is always trying to protect us. What we want to do is really sit with what is the impact. If I displace this onto my partner, then what is the consequence for our relationship? If it's done repeatedly, there's going to be a fracture in the relationship. So displacement may allow a person to express themselves and to relieve stress, even if they are directing it towards the wrong target. So however, this mechanism allows a person to process stress and anxiety in ways that are less threatening and more socially acceptable than confronting the issue head on. So I can't shout at my boss, but it can be part of a damaging and unhealthy cycle. So taking that out at home by being angry with your child yeah, you're releasing the emotions, but you're really not processing. You're really not processing the impact, the body sensations, the emotions, the inner child work. And you're really setting yourself up for being stuck. And you end up with relationship troubles, probably headed towards some addictive behaviors because you're not really feeling and dealing and scapegoating people. So what does that mean? It's really means that a person might have a difficult time with a messy home. So they might blame their partner or housemate for the mess, even if it resulted from someone or something else. Like instead of going directly to the source, they're going to blame it on somebody else because it's too scary to go directly to the source and say how you feel. And at this point in time, as an adult, it's up to us to stop the cycle. Here's some things that I'm going to suggest because one, we have to recognize when you're displacing, using displacing your negative emotions, quote unquote, onto somebody else. You have to recognize your defense mechanisms. There's many to choose from. And I'm going to be doing a series on defense mechanisms because these are so deeply ingrained in trying to protect us and they're not wrong or bad. They're maladaptive. So what once was adaptive in childhood is now maladaptive as an adult. So here's some suggestions. First of all, journal, okay? It's important that you're looking at what are you feeling, getting some perspective around it, writing out everything you wanna get out, even if it's negative into the paper. And if you wanna shred it later because people are afraid their journals are gonna be found, that's fine. But you gotta get it out. You've got to process the anger you feel towards your boss, the anger you feel towards your partner, Get it out first on paper. Don't be texting. Like that's, if you want to, if you have a knee jerk reaction, chances are you're going to be displacing some form of your anger onto somebody else. Take a pause, breathe, center yourself, write it out to get it out, get centered, get clear before sending a text, before writing a nasty gram, 
before picking up that phone and leaving a message, before texting something you're going to regret, doing some mindfulness practices such as yoga to connect to your feelings, breath, body sensations, meditation is great, movement of some kind, whether you're walking, Pilates, jogging, whatever that, riding a bike, whatever that looks like for you to not have a knee-jerk reaction. And the breath is one of the most important pieces of not displacing your feelings onto other people. And then you've got to do childhood work. It's important. I'm going to talk about a genogram, which we use in family therapy, where we map out family patterns. I'm going to be talking about that in upcoming episodes. Doing the work of inner child work, looking at your family systems and patterns, and what didn't you get to express as a child? Maybe you didn't get to express sadness, anger, disgust, grief, loss, maybe a difference of opinions, maybe transitions, whatever those milestone events, or maybe it was trauma and abuse. Getting the opportunity to attend to it, to name it, to express it is so important. And to have an empathic witness, such as a therapist, a support group, a supportive system, there is no price they can put on it. It's one of the most healing things you can do for yourself. And if you're really upset about something, chances are there's some level of displacement going on. You're getting activated from something in the past, not in the present. Not always. I don't want to make it an all or nothing. But I invite you to explore what is it in your past that you felt was unjust, not fair, where you didn't feel seen, heard, understood, important, that you mattered. And if you have that wound, chances are you're going to displace that onto your romantic partner, a friend, or your children, because you're going to feel like they are doing the same thing and without consciously knowing it. You don't want to displace your childhood pain or your trauma or your wounds triggers onto your children. There's a difference between projecting and displacement. Displacement is your own quote unquote negative emotions that you don't want to feel and you don't want to confront. You're taking it out on other people, basically. You're taking it out on other people. That's the best way to frame displacement where you're taking out what really has nothing to do with them, but you're taking it out on them. And this happens a lot in romantic relationships. You're taking out your bad day on your partner. You're taking out your stress and overwhelm on your children. You're taking out, you got screamed at at work and now you're taking it out on your pets and your family. That's displacement, taking it out on other people or things. And projection, and there's a whole nother episode if you want to go back to other episodes of the podcast. Projection is where you think that other person feels the way you think that they should feel. And so you project that they feel that way onto them or they think that way. So for example, I might project that my daughter's really sad when she has to switch classes at semester because she was really close to her friends in those classes. And I might project that because that's how I would feel rather than checking in with her and saying, hey, how do you feel about changing classes? And she says, oh, I feel excited. I'm ready for a kind of a change. I could have said, oh, I bet you're really upset that you're going to switch classes because you miss all your friends. I'm projecting that that's how she's feeling rather than checking in with her to ask her, how do you feel? So that's the distinction. And I invite you into listening to the projection episode. We'll link that down in the show notes. And then distinguishing between displacement, taking it out on somebody and projection, because I think those are really important distinctions. And my words of encouragement are, the more aware that you can be about yourself and your triggers, the better. I think it's important for us to highlight some other defense mechanisms beyond projection, just to have a high level example of some additional ways that people defend against emotions and pain. So avoidance is another one, which is dismissing uncomfortable thoughts or feelings by staying away from people, places, or situations that you don't want to face. So someone that was in a traumatic car accident might avoid driving. Or that's another defense mechanism, denial, continuing to engage in behaviors that may be damaging while dismissing 
real life consequences of the situation. So someone continues to shop for expensive designer clothes despite being in serious financial debt. Humor is another defense, which is reducing, resisting, or hiding negative emotions that may result from a situation by joking about it. Sarcasm is another example of that. So a person tells a funny story about someone during a funeral, which sometimes that's appropriate. I want to say that sometimes that is funny and people love sharing stories, but we're looking at it. Am I deflecting from not feeling by doing that? And this happens a lot in family systems. We don't really want to feel. So we're going to deflect. And rationalization is justifying one's behavior by attempting to provide a rational explanation. And so it's making excuses. It's trying to minimize what's really going on. Regression can be a sign of a defensive response or returning to behaviors from an earlier stage of life. So for example, a child begins wetting the bed after a traumatic incident, even though they've already grown out of this behavior. And one of the most important pieces of displacement is noticing it. The second thing is facing it and looking at what pain might have gotten repressed, suppressed, pushed down unconsciously, or maybe even consciously, and your willingness to face it, name it, process it, attune to it, and nurture it. So next time you start getting angry at somebody else, take a deep breath, see how much of it is a displacement onto maybe a situation that happened earlier that has nothing to do with them, or just notice what really might you be feeling Look for shame of not feeling good enough. See if that needs to be attended to. Take several deep breaths and be kind and nurturing to yourself. I'm here supporting you, walking you along the journey towards healing, growth, expansion of self, spirit, mind, body, and emotions. And I'm so proud of you for sticking with this episode, doing some self-exploration and realizing that you can make a difference by facing all of our emotions instead of moving away from them. I'll see you next week. Thank you so much for listening to the Close the Chapter podcast. My hope is that you took home some actionable steps along with motivation, inspiration, and hope for making sustainable change in your life. If you enjoyed this episode, click the subscribe button to be sure to get the updated episodes every week and share with a friend or a family member. For more information about how to get connected, visit Kristen, K-R-I-S-T-E-N-D, voice, B-O-I-C-E dot com. Thanks and have a great day.